Thank you, Nico. Thank you for um, having this pleasure to present. Um, actually, it's more like a perspective. Uh, at the end, we will, uh, I will show you also some, some effects of, of uh, some analysis. But at the beginning, I would like to say that I'm from the urban planning. I'm a trained architect. I'm working in the urban planning department, which means that our perspective is from <laughs> top to down. So uh, it looks a little bit different. But we really do um, appreciate uh, an option to be here, to cooperate, because we do believe, I mean, we as a group uh, who is here from uh, my department, that this um, collaboration between different disciplines is really needed, and especially when we look from top when we design the city. So um, I would like to... Um, this one? Which one is working? Sorry. <laughs> So um, the first picture, yeah. Um, when we look at the small scale, uh, which is the scale of a tree, we know uh, that it's a good um, uh, carbon container, but how it can affect uh, a global climate. So I use a picture from a book, uh, which is well known, when um, a mule said, I'm so small, but the boy said, but you will make a huge difference. And this is uh, quite of a <laughs> thesis that we, want to present uh, here, or I want to present when um, I think about a different scale. So from urban scale into the small um, window scale. Yeah? <laughs> um, so um, it, it has been, uh, there has been done uh, research by NASA uh, when uh, they um, were capturing the trees uh, globally and um, trying to find out how much carbon do they um, not consume, but um, Contain, and uh, NASA has presented such a outcome that globally we have some some areas where there is a container seals of um, of carbon to um, um, for for carbon to emissions, and uh, so those small trees, when we look from a bigger perspective, they really make a huge difference, and this is um, how uh, I understand we can translate. Uh, lighting, day lighting, electric lighting into an impact on a global scale. Because um, it's uh, the prediction of, of the global warming uh, uh, are very much combined with the CO2 emission. And it's not the question if, it's more the question how, how which scenario will we follow? And unfortunately, uh, probably uh, all of us will um, be uh, living in a hotter uh, climate soon, as uh, I uh, see he, he um, um, presents in the report. And that means that we all, our efforts are whatever we do, we just um, look which stage of hotter climate will we achieve. So um, I will start with the linkages um, just from the beginning, so of sustainable development which was um, um, firstly announced in the Brundtland uh, report um, in almost 40 years ago. And um, this was the foundation of how we understand sustainable development globally. So those three elements, uh, social, environmental, plus um, economic must be combined. Then uh, different milestones uh, were on, on the line, timeline. And the one that we especially should focus right now is a Kyoto Protocol, when different parties agreed on um, uh, carbon um, CO2 emission reduction. And uh, within the global perspective, we have also um, different um, perspectives um, uh, due to the different regions. Then a um, couple of years later, we have a sustainable development goals um, um, defined by United Nations. And right now we find those uh, SDGs everywhere. Yes, even in banking, in finances. So SDGs are like kind of a new vibe, I could say, for, for a, a future of the world. What has uh, been also agreed globally that we need to limit uh, the global warming below uh, two degrees. And this is also a global agreement uh, called Paris Agreement. Nevertheless, the trends uh, which are predicted are still showing us that we will um, have hotter climate, we will be growing, 
uh, but where where actually is more uh, in south uh, and uh, what is more important we will live in a city so it means that the densification or the um, compactness of the city will will grow and there are also other issues uh, especially regarding the need of energy that is uh, underlined so how we can um, translate sustainable development goals into urban planning so our disciplines and that is why I will have few <laughs> let's say uh, slides as well to uh, just to show you the background. Uh, United Nations have a special branch which is ur urban agenda, and they um, just one after a year after um, uh, sustainable development goals, they uh, presented an, uh, the conference uh, urban agenda, which was a list of the new uh, paths that we should follow. Different, uh, as I'm from Europe, uh, so different uh, countries uh, follow the um, this global agenda, or in Europe we have our uh, European urban agenda, which uh, also um, um, underlined the priority themes where we should uh, uh, go. And it doesn't um, touch only, let's say, technical um, elements, but it also touches uh, soft elements, like um, in sustainable development goals, for example, poverty. Then um, recently in the European Union, as we introduced the Green Deal, there was a need to um, present some kind of uh, initiatives that will present a good example, as we were uh, just today, um, um, for example, uh, explaining. And a new European Bauhaus was um, presented uh, by, by Ursula von der Leyen. And this is like a collection of a good uh, examples, like case studies, good examples to be followed uh, in the future and it's still on, on, of course, on the um, reproduction. And, um, but coming back, so uh, SDGs, uh, so first uh, report 40 years ago and what was uh, done within those 40 years, architects, urbanists were trying to look uh, the key concepts, how to uh, live and how to design in a new uh, um, sustainable uh, environment. So there are plenty of uh, concepts, and uh, for those of you who are maybe not the uh, designers, so the concepts for us are like uh, music, the rock music, as I listed here, we have uh, different types of music uh, that is called rock music, but they are a little bit different, and this is uh, the same with the concept. So kind of a like 15 minute city can be very related to compact city, but it's a little bit different. Anyway, uh, when we sum up, <laughs> What are the priorities of those um, all concepts? We can say that the um, human beings, like social inclusion or uh, jobs and skills, so those soft uh, elements appear in most of them, or um, such an uh, element uh, regarding um, energy or uh, urban mobility. So those were the priorities, and we, uh, or I put in some elements that we, uh, I, I believe that they are closer to low carbon or to uh, high comfort. Then uh, those um, priorities were um, or can be transformed into uh, uh, components, elements uh, regarding greenery, technology, um, um, architecture, and, and, and uh, how we implement it. But everything is around right now decarbonization. So we live in a decar, uh, or we do believe that we are going to live in a decarbonized world. So to sum up, um, those priorities and components, there are key uh, issues or features uh, or characteristics that will can this be described um, in urban uh, sustainable urban planning, and uh, those are, uh, are um, listed here. And during our workshops, we had a workshop, <laughs> and then we asked uh, experts, our experts, how do they find which of them are um, connected with our task. And uh, if this scale, is, this group global, uh, this urban big scale, can really relate to those uh, urban components, and then as we can see, half of it is really uh, very much uh, connected, as our um, experts have um, found out. So, just to present you some <laughs> pictures, how we interpreted this big scale into the um, indoors uh, um, design, I want to uh, show you. Uh, the um, task uh, subtask D, the impact of densification on visual comfort and well-being, the task that we are here developing. So we want to study different regulations. We want to study successful uh, neighborhoods, uh, the ones that are like iconic ones and the ones project that are kind of a copy paste 
in different <laughs> words, um, even in different climates, to get uh, the assumptions about the, what kind of a conditions, quality, daylight, um, quality do we get. Uh, so that's the proposed workflow. But uh, right now we have mostly uh, 12 um, case studies from Europe, but it will expand uh, during our workshops. We have uh, noticed, and um, we will uh, study not just the, the urban conditions, but we want to go into the room uh, scale in um, specific like boundary conditions, we call them. So the best and the worst conditions in, the, um, in those um, uh, case studies. So that's the list. And let me show you just a brief overview. So we right now just collected the data about the urban um, master plans, uh, key uh, regulations that shape, for example, here, Brunsvog uh, in Lund. And then we go into the urban block scale and we analyze uh, the parameters of urban block scale. And uh, by using software, trying to simulate uh, microclimate, wind, and daylight, sun hours, and daylight provision. So this is on the, let's say, urban scale um, um, urban scale and then we look for the best and the worst um, case scenarios to go into detail and um, of course um, this will, this is just a work um, that uh, we were able to prepare by now but we want to answer some from our perspective crucial questions that can be later uh, translated into the guidelines which are for example what kind of uh, functions are in those not dilated spaces or what kind of uh, uh, parameters, urban parameters shapes buildings or what are um, the proportions and so on so on. So this kind of, uh, let's say, maybe I hope we will also uh, find out a nice graphic as it was uh, said before, we need to be communicative uh, in a graphic way to um, find out the, the solution. But that's not all. We're, oops. Uh, so this is the study that we do um, within the staff, but parallel we are also doing uh, some other uh, projects and just to show you how this urban scale can go into the uh, indoor scale and how it can shape, reshape um, a settlement. This is the case of the densification of a block of flats, uh, housing estate, very popular in Poland. So the densification and uh, urban regeneration wave, it's like towards this kind of a new um, uh, densification uh, scenarios uh, that are gonna be uh, invested in, in uh, EU. So uh, in this um, case, we asked, um, uh, or I asked students to look for the regulation, urban regulations and to find the scenarios of densification. And we had, let's say, three uh, um, options, the low one and the, most, the maximum one. And actually the uh, middle one was uh, chosen. Of course, the developer may say, I will earn <laughs> um, much more in the uh, lower, um, the, the below um, the scenario, but we wanted to um, look also on the well being and the human uh, perception. And in this case, the views shape uh, actually the urban uh, composition. So some elements, uh, some buildings had to be uh, shifted or they had to be um, reduced due to the quality of view of the people who used to live in the uh, urban settlement. So uh, this was, yeah, I'm not finishing. So this is one study. <laughs> when I was trying, it was 10 minutes and then I am uh, okay. The, another project that I'm doing with, with uh, Lund University, it's uh, translating also one of those um, components of uh, sustainable uh, development, which is uh, blue, uh, blue green infrastructure and the system of blue green infrastructure within the whole district. How, and then how it shaped the space in between the buildings. So uh, the blue-green blue infrastructure with this different system and then the daylight provision, because it's not like separate. We want to combine those two uh, elements. So um, both um, having in mind the daylight simulations uh, here, mostly in urban interior and um, uh, designing landscape. So just uh, beyond, I want to just, uh, if you allow me, <laughs> Uh, one more minute, because uh, it's very interesting. We uh, in urban design discuss that sustainable development are not anymore um, enough to do work uh, with. We should go beyond. We should think about degrowth, which may sound a little bit scary, but it's more about feeling, uh, um, designing uh, spaces or neighborhoods that are self-sufficient or a donut economy. So this is something that to come up. But to conclude, <laughs> 
Of course, um, um, and this is a good um, information for us, for the task, and I hope um, for, for um, also decision makers, uh, lighting and solar energy are ca kind of uh, listed in the IECPD uh, um, report, one of the key elements to uh, mitigate the climate. That's only the question of the trade-off. We also today discussed that it's some, we have to have trade-off, uh, like I showed in, for example, in the, one of the projects. Uh, but both elements are very, very um, important in the mitigation. So um, there is a call for action. There is a call for uh, interdisciplinary uh, research and, and uh, of course, different um, proposals because we want to achieve uh, blue scenarios of global warming, not the red one. And then, final, <laughs> from the same book that I book, book, uh, bought last time in London at our meeting, I hope that one day you will look back and realize how hard it was, and um, uh, you cannot see now, and just how well you did. This is my, <laughs> I hope that in the future we will be able to be so proud of it. Thank you very much.